have like a really, really long summer. Wow. Yeah. Okay, man. So I hope you guys are ready because I want to summarize all the 2017 summers. So <laughs> guys, okay, come to Okay, come to But the other thing as well, as, as you're preaching, it's, it's like participating. It's not like I'm just speaking the word to you, but if you're encouraged, you shout and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shout yeah. Glory. Yeah. And when you see, you say amen. Yeah. Because it's God's word. Amen. And I've seen you guys dancing at the Christmas party, so I know <laughs> that you guys can really move. <laughs> you really love dancing, bro. <laughs> so let us pray before I mess everything up. Our uh, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for today, Lord. Yeah. Uh, we're so grateful for just the privilege of uh, who you've called us to be, Father. Yeah. We're so grateful, God, that uh, you've uh, taken care of us until the very end of the year. I mean, so many people, uh, they had great ambitions, great dreams, and, you know, great hopes for this year, but the Lord are with us, Father. And, you know, some of them have already lost their lives, Father, and they never knew that that's going to happen. And for us, Father, you've kept us safe, Father. Uh, you just really uh, taken care of us in such a special, special way, Father. Uh, every single uh, week, uh, you spoke your word to us, Father. Uh, we were greatly encouraged, Father. We, we saw your face every morning uh, as we uh, read our word, Father. Uh, and so we are grateful for all you've done, Father. We yeah. can definitely uh, just feel your grace, God, and uh, we know that you're with us, Father. Yeah. But just pray, Father, that uh, as we open the word today, God, that you just take me out of the picture, Father. Mm -hmm. That whatever it was that you want me to speak, Father, I pray that I'm from your throne, Father, and I pray that we we'll live here encouraged and change my Father. Amen. We just love you so much. We're doing your loss for your glory, and we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. 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 So, you know, Christmas was like a really special time for me because I go to do a, like a lot of stuff I've never done in the past. Uh, one of the things that I did was just get involved in Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> so, so some of you like are wondering, why are you like born in the sticks or something? How come you've never like watched Star Wars? But Jeff and Butter me. You know, Come on, Jen. I, I did a couple of studies in Jen, in the movies, and I have a full uh, Star Wars combat. <laughs> so in between taking care of my lovely wife, Krista, and taking care of Algona, I had almost half a day of watching like five episodes. Wow. Which I wasn't in one sitting, so I wasn't in scene right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like really, really amazing. And what's so special about Star Wars? Let us look at uh, the statistics. Oh. So the franchise itself has raked in over forty billion dollars. Wow. The latest movie, The Last Jedi, so far in just two weeks, is brought in over one billion. Wow. Oh. Wow. And this stuff doesn't obviously include all the illegal copies that you buy in a supermarket car park or <laughs> <laughs> that you watch online, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or something. Uh, but with such stats, a question that begs to be asked is. You know, why do people love Star Wars? <laughs> why do people love Star Wars? And as you do in such situations, where do you go? You consult Alexa, you know, yeah. Amazon Alexa. <laughs> or you have to go to Google. You just like go in and type in, why do people like Star Wars? Oh, wow. Guess what happens? Just like magic, answers appear. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the things that I love about Star Wars, it's all about friendship. It reminds them so much about their childhood and also the build-up of the story. Hmm. And George Lucas is just an incredible uh, uh, thing as well. But one thing that stood out for me when I watched the first movie was when Princess Leia, like one of the characters, said, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you are my only hope. <laughs> so the plot is driven by hope. Come right, on. yep. That the light true. side will eventually overcome the dark side. That's right, yeah, that's true. But before George Lucas, before George Lucas 977, bro. We had the real author of Star Wars. Yeah. The Apostle John wrote about Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. And this was like around Jeez. 81 AD, yeah. AD. Yeah. Yeah. Way before that. So let's turn to Revelation 12 Jeez. and read what yeah. John said about the real Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Revelation 12. Jeez. Kill us. Come on, bro. In the face, bro. <laughs> so this one just gives us a perspective of what's really happening. So Revelation 12, verse 1, it says, A great and wondrous sun appeared in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun with the moon at her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain and she was, as she was about to give birth. So first of all, we see like a wondrous sun appearing in heaven and this is a sign of a woman. 
And this suman symbolizes God's people, both in the Old and the New Covenant. With the 12 stars is the 12 sons of Israel, and also with the 12 apostles as well. And with the sun and the moon, is just like showing the, uh, the radiance of God's glory. Let's go and read it in verse 3. Then it says, Then another sign appeared in heaven, and an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. Then over here we see another second sign, and this time it's like a massive, a huge dragon that appears, a red dragon. How big was it? It was so big that its tail like swept away like a third of the stars in the sky. Jeez. So it was a massive, massive, massive dragon. And the color red, it was red, symbolizing bloodshed. And this dragon had seven heads and seven crowns. That's kind of, kind of creepy. So he had seven heads and seven crowns. But why did he have the crowns? Well, because this dragon was desiring worship. And also he had ten horns. Why ten horns? Horns are the symbol of power. And then he was saying that he was waiting to devour the child the woman was about to give back. And here you see that the dragon was waiting for the woman to give back so she can be able to destroy the child. Let's find out who the child is. <coughs> In verse 5, she gave birth to a son, Amelisha, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was snatched up to God and to his throne. Verse 5. So here he says that, you know, as they, the dragon is about to snatch up the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the son uh, who was born by the woman, you know, the son was snatched up to heaven. And this son is Jesus that actually was born. And here you see the, the whole life of Jesus just in one sentence where he says, and the child was snapped up to God and to, the, to his throne. So we know that Jesus was born, he died, he was erected, and went up to heaven. So that's what this is saying. And the devil wanted to destroy the only hope we have through Jesus. So let's go and read from verse 7. Then now, that's, that's where the Star Wars begin. Oh. And there was war in heaven. Hey. <laughs> wow. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. So here you see that the Michael and his angels fought the dragon. And guess what the dragon did? He didn't sit back. <coughs> the dragon really fought back. Mm. Mm. Verse 8. He says, But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was held down. The ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was held to the earth, and his angels with him. So here you see the dragon was not that strong, and he was chucked away from heaven. In verse 10 it says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accused them before our God and night has been held down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Amen. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But war mm. to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Mm. Let's jump to verse 17. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of, the rest of our offspring those who obey God's, God's commandments and who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Amen. So here you see, there, are, there, are, there, there is hope. And the hope is what? That through Jesus, we can be able to overcome the dragon. Amen. What he says here, that the devil is on earth. And he is like furious. He is like super angry. You can just picture him like flipping tables. Yeah. Punching walls, knocking down doors, kicking doors, and it's so intense that because he deserves worship and he's ready for bloodshed. So even as I'm sitting here this morning, you know there, there, there is a war that's taking place. Yeah. Yeah. There are like a lot of yeah. spiritual bonds being dropped on you. Amen. You know the bonds of doubt, <coughs> the, the bonds of, uh, of doubt, the bonds of fear, <coughs> and everything else. And the devil wants to kill and destroy the faith that you have. The devil wants to kill and destroy yep. that you have. Yep. You know when you say Jesus is Lord, and you continue to obey God's word, guess what you did? You became a sworn enemy of the devil. Mm, wow. right. So welcome to the difficulties. Hey, hey. Welcome. Come on, perfect. Welcome to the real soul. Hey. 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 
We are uncertain of who's going to win. But we all know that Disney wants to win for money, that's why they <laughs> But in our Star Wars, the battle is already fixed. Amen. But if we forget that, we lose hope. So I'll simply entitled the chart of our last chart of this year, The Real Star Wars, A New Hope. Amen. Come on, awesome. So, point number one, or episode one, is this. To gain, you must stay in the pain. Come on. To gain, you must stay in the pain. Come on, true. So I sent a survey and I asked you one question. How would you describe 2017 in one word? How would you describe 2017 in one word? If you have another chance to fill the survey, just take a couple of seconds to think about that. And who wants to hear the results? Of the yes. Yes. Everybody. Hey man, I won't mention anyone's name. Oh. You said anonymous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. But this is what came out. So some say the year was awesome. Yeah, come on. Some say the year was positive. Some say it was enlightening. Come on. Some say it was a year of pruning, it was transforming, it was bittersweet, it was a year of being humbled. Mm -hmm. Some say it was a very defining year, it was a very green year, it was a very unfulfilling year, it was a very painful year, it was a very tragic year, it was a very challenging year, it was a very difficult year. So welcome to our real Star Wars. Amen. So based on your answers, we are in a spiritual battle. Yeah. 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 You felt the same way you felt because we are in a spiritual battle. Yeah. And I want you to do something. I want you to check your pulse. Just put okay. your two fingers right here and check your pulse. Yeah, you guys feel the heartbeat right now? Yes. No. no. You feel the pulse? I don't know. So as long as you're alive, guess what? You have not seen the end of the spiritual war. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know what they say during wars? Only the dead have seen the end of war. Yeah, it's true. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. But when you're alive, you haven't seen the end of war. That's right. Come yeah. on. And we also have a role to play in the, in the real Star Wars. We are all like very <coughs> incredible characters in our real Star Wars. So we need to be strong in the Lord and the mighty power. And we need to remember that every single day as you wake up, we need to put in the full armor so that we can be able to understand to stand the, the devil's skin. So in our Star Wars, perspective is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Perspective is everything. The only thing sometimes you have control of over your life is perspective. Yeah. You don't have control over all situations. God does that. But we have a choice on how to view them. Yeah. And I want to persuade you that we need to have the Romans 5 perspective when you're fighting this war. <coughs> So turn your Bible to Romans 5. Come on. Turn your Bible to Romans 5. Thanks, bro. So, you know when Paul was writing this, just look at the context of the warfare. So Paul wrote this around uh, AD 55. Uh, he was uh, hoping to visit the, the city of Rome. Uh, he hadn't been there. But there was so much happening both outside the church and inside the church that was very challenging. Outside, there was like a lot of evil that was increasing, a lot of wickedness, a lot of depravity. How much the depravity? Paul says that both men and women exchange natural sexual relationships for unnatural ones. Mm -hmm. In fact, 14 out of the first 15 emperors were all practicing homosexuality. <coughs> yep. So just imagine if that was a lifestyle, wow. what was happening underneath them? Mm -hmm. The city was in decay. Apart, apart from that, there was like intense persecution. But inside the church, there was also like a lot of things which happened which were very intense. You know, the Jews were chucked away by Claudius uh, from Rome. When they came back, now the church was full of Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So the Jews were like, okay, hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. We are the chosen people. So they said, okay, hey, you know, we have the law. We want to go back and become more legalistic. Mm -hmm. And the Gentiles and the Hanna said, hey, you know, we've been forgiven a lot. We're going to sin much more because we know the grace will cover that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things happening in the church as well. Mm -hmm. So if you read Romans 5, you can get the context of what is really happening. So Romans 5 from verse 1. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So he says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, 
We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we know that before we became disciples, guess what? We were all enemies of God. Right. right. But through Jesus, we became friends and we are now in the right standing with God. Amen. So verse 2, it says, through whom we have gained access by faith into grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit yep. whom he has given us. Amen. So here he says that we need to rejoice in our suffering. Yeah. So you remember what you all said about the year, that it was difficult, mm -hmm. yeah. that it was challenging, yeah. that it was tragic, that it was painful. We all need to say hallelujah. Hallelujah! hallelujah. hallelujah. We all need to rejoice in that. Woo. We all need to rejoice in that. Yes. You know, in Greek the word suffering uh, is, a, is a word called uh, slippies, mm -hmm. which literally means pressure. So, another question that I asked you is like, what was the most challenging thing about the year? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah, so what was the most challenging thing about this year? <laughs> you know, they, 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 some of the answers are like, you know, our friends falling away. Yeah. You know, like yeah. people that you really held dearly, you really loved, you really yeah. felt should be had together, they yeah. fell away. Some of you just said, you know what, the most challenging thing for me was I almost gave up. Wow. I yeah. almost gave up on God. Yeah. Some just say the most challenging thing for me was just becoming a disciple. Wow. Why? Because you became a new creation and everything changed. Mm -hmm. You know, your time got baptized, so your schedule changed. So some of them just found out, okay, man, the disciple's schedule is very challenging. Right. <laughs> it's like, do I, have to be, do I have to give 10 hours a week to the meeting of the body? Do I have to come to church every single week on Sunday? Do I have to meet with the brothers? So they found it very, very challenging. And then some of them just found like it challenging because they're not being in control. They, they, they found that they're not in control. And then also the changes that took place in the, in the region as well. Yeah. Some of them found that very challenging. Being a new mother was very challenging. Dealing with the past, mm. they found that very challenging. Learning how to overcome grief, battling with depression, finding oneself, being faithful in prayer, Relationships that didn't work out, conflict with parents, bad discipling, lack of baptisms, lack of growth in the past, and even some of us experienced death. Mm. So you see that this year was really, really challenging. So first of all, I want each and every single one of you to give yourself an applause Amen. for being here and acquitted. <laughs> so, we are still sitting here. Despite all these challenges, we still have fight in us. Come on. Come on. And as Yoda says, do or do not, there is no try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys yeah. did what you had to do. That's right. Yeah. And then also he says that it leads to something. All the pressure that you faced yeah. have produced one thing called perseverance. That's right. Yes. The Greek word perseverance is hupomone, which literally means endurance. Yeah. It's not like a, a very passive thing that you're just enduring and time goes by, but it's just actively doing something. Right. You're actively doing something. Mm -hmm. So the question that I have for you, so how you describe the year, how you describe the challenge that you actually faced, what weapons did you use in 2017 to face these challenges? Mm -hmm. Were you joyful in hope? Mm -hmm. Were you patient in affliction? Mm -hmm. Were you faithful in prayer? Right. Or have you become miserable in hope? Mm -hmm. Have you become frustrated in affliction? Right. Wow. Have you become frustrated in pressures? Or have you become unfaithful in prayer? Come on. So, you know, the opportunity to mature as a disciple is not like the London buses. I don't know if you guys have been there. You know, you can wait for ages for London bus, yep. and mm -hmm. then three of them come along at once. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not what opportunity is for a disciple. But opportunity as a disciple has a very direct correlation with how obedient you are. The more consistent you are with your quiet times, guess what? The more you become faithful. It's true. Mm -hmm. it's true. The more you share your faith, guess what? The more you become more patient, the more you become more kind. Mm. The more you encourage one another, you have the, and you have heart moving details, the more you become more selfless and the more loving you actually become. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And what does this perseverance do? This perseverance is meant to make us look more like Christ. Mm -hmm. It builds our character. Right. The word character in Greek is dokime, oh, which yeah. actually means um, when you literally put a metal through the fire, to able to, to get rid of all impurities. Right. Um, yeah. So when you went through all these challenges, there was a reason why God allowed you to go through these challenges. Yes. Yes. Amen. Come on, Victor. And when you meet challenges with perseverance, out of the battle, you will emerge stronger, more purer, more better, and more nearer to God. Yeah. So the question I'd like to ask again is. Has your character changed this year? Mm. Has your character changed this year? Mm. If it has, where and what are the fruits? Right. Yeah. If it has, what and where are the fruits? You know, where is the joy? You know, where is the peace? Where is the patience? Where is the kindness? Where is the goodness? Where is the faithfulness? Where is the gentleness? Where is the self-control? And if you said, yes, I've got all these fruits of the Spirit, then have these fruits helped you to be able to make someone into a disciple? Mm -hmm. So if your character has changed, what are the fruits of your character changing? Mm -hmm. And over here it says as well, guess what, what happens? Character makes you become more hopeful. Mm -hmm. It produces hope. Mm -hmm. And according to the scriptures, we don't, we don't want to go through Webster and see what Webster says. No. Oh. But according to the scriptures, we know what it says in Romans 8. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. Right. Who hopes for what they already have? You don't hope for what we already have, you hope for what is unseen. Mm -hmm. And if you've gone through this and you've gone through a character changing, then you're gonna have the hope that you need to have. So if you are faced with a mountain of uh, with a mountain of despair and you have hope, hope will have several options. Hope will have several options. You know what hope can do? Hope can make you climb over that mountain. Hope can make you cross to the side. Hope can make you go around the mountain. Right. Hope can be able to make you dig under the mountain. Hope can even fly over it. Right. But guess what hopeless, hopelessness will do? Hopelessness will make you ignore the, uh, the mountain. Hopelessness is going to make you pretend that it's not there. It's going to make you turn around and go back. Mm -hmm. And even hopelessness can make you settle at the foot of the mountain. <coughs> wow. But this is not us. As it says in Ecclesiastes 9 4, write this down. Anyone who is among the living as hope. Well. Yeah. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. <laughs> so, what I want us to do is like, we, we need to have a conviction that there are no hopeless situations. No. Yeah. It's only men and women who have grown hopeless about the situation. Come on, bro. There can never be such a thing as a hopeless disciple. Yeah. Right. As long as you're living, or yes, as long as you're living, all of us will climb this mountain and go to the other side. Yeah. And judging by responses, no one wants to stay where they are. No. Amen. No. Judging by responses, no one wants to stay out where they are. Because the question I ask is, what's one thing you're hoping to achieve in 2018? And this is what you actually responded. You said I want to move out. Hopefully you don't want to move out of the brother's house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who was that? I'll check with him. You didn't supposed to move in the brother's house. Brother's house. A lot of us say we want to be more fruit being yeah. A lot of us say we want to rely on God. We want to be more holy. We want to start on businesses. We want to get uh, more into God's word. We want to be more mature. We want to have a better career. We want to have answered in prayers. We want to have peace with God and man, and also to become a, uh, a better leader. And more than that, we want to double the West. Come on. Amen. So all these are like incredible, incredible, incredible hopes that we have 2017. Yeah. Yeah. So my challenge is simple. You need to make a plan for your 2018 hopes. Yeah. Yeah. You need to make a plan for your 2018 hopes. So if you say you want to move out, you gotta have a plan to find it. If you say you want to be fruitful, you gotta have to make a plan to be able to do that. Because why? We know that 2017 has been a character building year mm -hmm. so that we can go into 2018 even more hopeful. Right. So one of the most famous phrases in Star Wars is, may the force be with you. Okay. <laughs> and it was often used when uh, people parted ways 
and they went to face like a very impending challenge. And as we go in 2018, we won't say, may the force be with you. We will say, may the Lord be with you. Yeah. Yeah. May the Lord be with you. <laughs> so this brings us to our second point. Episode number two, may the Lord be with you. Come on, bro. So the question that I ask as well is, what are some of the achievements that you're most proud of in 2017? What are some of the achievements you're most proud of in 2017? And some say nothing. I don't believe that. Wow. Other disciples, wow. <laughs> there's something you've achieved. Mm -hmm. We've all have achieved something. Yeah, come on. But some of the achievements of this, like <coughs> job-wise, people kept new jobs, uh, they had work placements, they had job promotions and everything else. So that was like really, really incredible. Amen. And personally, a lot of people say that, you know, they became more loving, uh, they survived being a new mother. Uh, some of them were able to go. <laughs> 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 some of them say that, you know, obviously we the GLC, the space building, Amen. and even some of them just say growing spiritually. And some of us even graduated in 2017. Amen. So for those who graduated, just stand up. Please, please. Just stand up. Oh, Like an incredible, incredible achievement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is an incredible achievement. Thank you. Thank Being you. a disciple, graduating, it is like, it's incredible. Because yeah. you guys put like a lot of hard work in that. True. Yep. Yes. And the other great achievement for 2017 was becoming a baptized Aww. disciple. Yeah. 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 Becoming a sold out baptized <laughs> disciple. <laughs> for again, for those who got baptized in 2017, <laughs> please stand up. <laughs> for you to become a baptized disciple of Jesus. So despite all the challenges of how tragic, painful, difficult that the year was, look at the fruits of what your character has been able to produce. Come on, come on. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 13, 2 Corinthians 13. And let's see what Paul says about what needs to be with you. So remember, episode 2 is May the Lord be with you. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14, it says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So here it, was, it wasn't just may the force be with you, yeah. but it was may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love of God be with you. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And this is now how we need to go into 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the first thing here he says is may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And as we learned last year from Colby's lesson, Excellent. grace is something that earned and you are undeserved. It's yeah. like when you're sick, about to die, and someone miraculously cures you, and then before you leave the hospital, pays all your bills, then gives you a key to the Bentley, hey. then gives you that your own property. That's what grace is. Yeah. It's something which is unmerited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says, imagine this kind of grace, this grace is with you in 20, 2018. Wow. What can you not achieve right. if the cross of Jesus is with you? Amen. It is grace that teaches us to say no to ungodly stuff yeah. and yes to what is godly. We find that out in Titus 2 11. And then the second thing that Paul says is may the love of God be with you. May the love of God be with you. Mm. How do you describe God's love? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Ephesians 3.18. <laughs> you guys are really asking very great yeah. questions this morning. Oh, big guy. Yes. So look at this love. Look at God's love in Ephesians 3. It says in Ephesians 3, uh, let's uh, figure out from uh, verse 17. It says, And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may have the power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is. This is like a three-dimensional love. Yeah. It is like the Christ of, uh, the, the, the love of God is like so wide, it can cover everyone. Wow. It is so deep, it can be able to get you from the, de from the deepest sin. 
It is so long that it will never end. It is so high that you can't get over it. And this is the love that needs to be with us. <coughs> so as we go into 17, let us remember that this is God's love, that it is very wide, very long, high and deep. Let's go to uh, Romans 8 as well. Come on, bro. To find out about the love of God. So let us find about the love of God. Is this is the love that needs to be with us as we go into 2018. So Romans 8, from verse 37, it says this. No, in all these things you are more than conquerors. Through he will love us. Yeah. How many love us? For I am convinced neither death nor life Neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in our creation mm. will be able to separate us from the love of God wow. that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So this is the love that God has for us. That nothing, nothing, nothing can ever separate us from the love that's in Christ right. that he has for us. So even the challenges that we face this year, you know, you say, okay, hey, it's impossible for me to do that. You know, I felt it was tragic. I felt it was painful. Guess what? That can never separate you from the love that God has for you. Yeah. So as we go to the team, may this love of God be with us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And then we know that God has a plan for us, and His plan for us is an incredible plan. Yeah. yeah. His on, plans man. for us are not to harm us. His plan for us is to give us a hope in the future. Amen. But we all need to see God with all our hearts. Yeah. And then the last thing that Paul says is, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Yeah. So let's go to John 14 and see what kind of fellowship that uh, Paul is talking about. So John 14, Come on, bro. from verse 15. So this is Jesus confronting his disciples just before uh, his, uh, he goes across. <coughs> so he says this. From verse 15 of John 14. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Mm. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or, or not knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Mm. So here he's saying that, first of all, we don't love God just by saying we love God. We love God by doing what he actually says and Amen. what he wants to be able to do. Right. And he says actually that I'm going to give you the spirit which is your counselor. So on here, this Greek word is a, a word which I won't try and pronounce. <laughs> but this is a word which is uh, un untranslatable. And the Greek, word, the, the Greek meaning of this word actually is like a person who's called in to give witness in a law court in someone's favor. Oh, so if you're in deep trouble, they call like an expert to say, okay, hey, you need to help this guy out. Mm -hmm. And also, you actually say, this is someone you call in when you have a difficult situation. Yeah. So when you have a difficult 2017, guess what? The spirit is with you. Mm -hmm. So it might be also, for example, a person who's called during war. So during war, when guys are like, you know, the war has been prolonged, they will call like an expert to go into the battlefield and be able to encourage the soldiers. Wow. So they can be able to get the strength they actually need. Wow. Yeah. And this is the same one that he had to translate as the counselor. Yep. So here we see that we are not being left as orphans, that we have the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. And this spirit is able to intercede for us when you're in trouble. This is the spirit that calls into us when you have face when faced with situations. And this is a spirit that's going to help us to be victorious in 2018. Mm -hmm. So areas where we lack hope in, in, 2017, uh, in 2018 are these. We lack hope in repeating the same mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We lack hope in, in doing great things for God. Mm -hmm. Some of us just feel we're not able to do great things for God in 2018. Mm -hmm. Some of us lack hope in of being changed, of growing, of being fruitful, never dating, never marrying, losing weight, helping a friend becoming a disciple, changing lives effectively. Uh, we don't have hope in certain relationships. We don't have hope in our, our SEC and masters. Uh, we don't have hope that we'll have an impact on campus. We don't have hope with our family members becoming disciples. So these are some of the areas that we actually lack hope in. But 
we know that the Lord is with us. Amen. And if the Lord is with us, there is nothing impossible. Amen. Amen. So the challenge is simple. The challenge is simple. You need to have a plan for the areas you lack hope in. Mm. Wow. So all those areas that you say I'm, I'm hopeless in, you need to have a plan in them. Right. Not only do you need to have a plan in them, you need to share them with someone who disciples you. Because the Lord is with you. Yeah. So let's go uh, on, on to the next point. And, and someone who's really uh, grown in this area, before we go to the next point, is our brother Abraham. Come on, bro. Come on, Abraham. Come on, bro. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Abraham. You're too solid. So someone who's like really grown in terms of the character and everything else is our brother Abraham. Yeah. So like most of you know how the year started for Abraham. January 4th of this year, guess what happened? Abraham lost his mom. What a way to start your year. Abraham lost his mom. So after losing the mom, it was a very challenging, uh, challenging year for him. How do I cope with grief? You know. A lot of people didn't know how to encourage him and everything else. And at even one point, or point in time, he just thought, you know, I can't be a disciple anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't be a disciple anymore. But guess what he did? He stuck in, he persevered, and he's really developed character. <laughs> like, just see Abraham's song leading. He's really, really improved. Yeah. He's really giving his heart. How do you see Abraham like encouraging one, uh, one uh, encouraging uh, the body? He's like really doing a great job in that. And we all need to follow that example. So let's go to our last point, episode number three. Jesus is our only hope. Amen. And because we do this communion, also this is going to be part of the communion that I'm doing, that Jesus is our only hope. Yep. So let's go to 2 Timothy. Come on, let's go to 2 Timothy. Glory. You actually get us a glory. 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 Are you guys there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Come on, Victor. Okay, it's actually fast, Timothy. Come on, Come on bro. <laughs> it cranks too. <laughs> it's fast, Timothy 1 1. It says this. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior, and Christ Jesus our hope. Mm. So here actually Paul calls Jesus as our hope. Mm. Mm. So this title was used a lot in the first century. In the early church, this became one of the most used titles. So for example, before Ignatius was, uh, was about to be persecuted and killed in Rome, he writes to the guys in Ephesus and says, be of good cheer in God and the Father, and in Jesus Christ, our common hope. So he says Jesus is our common hope. Mm. And then also Polycarp writes this, he says, let us therefore persevere in our hope and be honest of our righteousness, who is Jesus Christ, our hope. Mm. So even Polycarp knew that Jesus is our hope. Mm -hmm. So hope is something very, very, very special, and Jesus Christ is our hope. <coughs> and just to share like my story briefly, my story, uh, as most of you guys, guys know, I came to the UK because um, I came here as an orphan. You know, just someone saw, okay, hey, you know, you've lost both your parents. I lost my mom when I was like around 10 years old. Ten years later, I lost my dad. And someone was like, okay, hey, I want to bring you to the UK so you can have a new hope, you can start life over again. So I came over to the UK. And then coming to the UK was very challenging because I was trying to, you know, discover myself, like, what does life have for me? Why am I here? What are all these things? Why, why did this, all these things happen to me? You know, why did God take away my, my parents at such a young age? So I, I had so much bitterness, not only towards God, but just towards the situations, counsels that God had put me through it. But I understood one thing that, you know, if I, if I don't have hope in something, you'll end up getting bitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And becoming a disciple and having hope in Jesus really put everything into perspective that every single thing that happened, happened for a reason. Yeah. And I look at my life before I became a disciple as well, I just see the kind of things that got myself involved in because I didn't have any hope. Mm. You know, I didn't have hope in myself, I didn't have hope in anyone. So I got involved with like a lot of things like, uh, you know, a, a lot of impurities, you know, 
with a constant urge for more. You know, things like sexual morality, uh, adultery, uh, going to uh, brothels and prostitution. That was just what my life was all about. So I didn't have any hope at all in anything at all. But becoming a disciple really gave us a new hope in what we can actually be able to achieve. So the challenge, the, the thing that I want to implore on you is that as we go into next year, we need to understand that what Jesus did on the cross for us is the reason why we have the hope that we have. Amen. Yep. Is the reason why we have the hope that we have. Mm. So the challenge for you is simply this, is that this year, let us always remember the cross. Yeah. Whatever challenging, challenging thing you're going through, let us always remember the cross. Yeah. And in closing, in closing, you know, in closing, as we've seen in episode one, the first thing we need to remember is this, is that the most important thing for us to understand is that we know that God is with us. Yeah. No matter what challenges that we'll face in 2018, that God is going to be with us. Amen. And the other thing as well as disciples, we have to understand that we, we, as long as you're alive, there's still hope. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're alive, there's still hope. Yeah. And also that Also, not to forget that we are in a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. We are in a spiritual battle, and we all have to fight because this fight is already fixed. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to leave you with the words of Winston Churchill, uh, which he said uh, during World War II, and this is what he said You know, we shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. Mm -hmm. We shall fight in the beaches, we shall fight in the landing grounds, yeah. we shall fight in the fields yeah. and in the streets, and we shall fight in the hills. We shall never, never, never surrender. Amen. As we go into 2018, let us remember that we need to fight the good fight of all. Amen. And to God be all the glory.